Hi there, my name's Sandy. I'm on staff at VCDC in case you haven't met me. I'm Michael's assistant. I help to lead a couple of small groups. I oversee our peer counseling ministry and was asked to sh share a devotional with you today. So the world has gone a little crazy, hasn't it? And even though some of us are slowly, progressively moving toward things that should feel normal, like going back to the workplace or maybe to church in a few weeks, maybe you've gone to a store, restaurant, nothing is the same. And we feel we are surrounded by reminders that uh, we don't have control of our lives. Not that we ever really have, but because we're human, this creates feelings for all of us. So I guess the question I have for you today is how are you? Really, how's your soul? How are you doing with Jesus? How are you doing right now? Because maybe a few weeks ago or yesterday or an hour ago, you have felt differently than you do right now. The assurance I wanna give you is that if you are not okay right now, you will be. And if you're feeling peaceful and full of faith as you hear this, thank God for the grace that he's given you. So the, the world feels out of control. God is not surprised by COVID, social unrest, election rhetoric, or anything. I confess, I talk to myself a lot, but I am in good company because David in the Psalms talks to himself a lot too, telling his soul to settle down. And I've been doing a lot of that myself lately. He prayed that the Lord would search his heart and then turn or repent from the things that were not of God. And that's what we're gonna do today. I've felt the need for, I guess, imagery right now, something tangible that I can hold on to. And uh, the Lord has led me to Colossians 3. And so I'm gonna read it and, and then we'll just rest in it for a few minutes. Starting in verse eight. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on a new nature. Be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. And in verse 12, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So this passage describes what at BCDC we would call a spiritual exchange. Lifting up our hands, allowing God to strip off the things in us that are not of him, and then receiving clean clothes, things that are of him. As Vicki talked about in her devotion a couple of weeks ago, we can't change ourselves by our own will. We can only be transformed by the Holy Spirit. So I've been resting as in this passage and as I've done so, the Lord brought a sweet picture to mind. Uh, he loves to um, remind me of uh, his goodness through my grandchildren. And 
um, I, I had the privilege of spending time with my three and six year old grandsons. And I've always been uh, kind of tickled by their bedtime routine. So their mom will call them upstairs at bedtime and they'll go upstairs. And then she will um, say to each of them, mano sorriba, which means hands or arms up. And they lift their little hands to the sky and she takes off their dirty clothes from the day, pops them in a warm bathtub, and then after their bath, she wraps them in a warm towel, snuggles them, and then says again, manos arriba, and they lift their hands again, and she puts on clean clothes for the night. Um, and I have just always been delighted in, in watching that. So, but what Jesus has been reminding me of lately as I've um, been thinking about that picture is that it mirrors this Colossians passage that we just talked about. First, this is a routine. My boys do this every day. They lift their hands as an act of obedience and submission, which is what Paul is calling us to do in this passage. They come out of the bathtub cleaner than when they go in. They get a sweet snuggle from their mom or dad. And we have the opportunity to have a sweet snuggle from Jesus. They respond to their parents' voice with joy, giggles. And they're sometimes rewarded with like a tickle from their daddy <laughs> under their armpit. But that time together with the Lord changes them. And so, my church, I encourage you to allow Jesus to take off the things that are not of him and put on the things that are. Let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit. Show us the things you want to remove from our hearts and our minds. And give us grace to repent and receive your forgiveness. Please slip on tender-hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Give us grace to make allowances for each other's differing perspectives and weaknesses and forgive anyone who has offended us. And above all, clothe us with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. May your peace Rule our hearts, Lord. We pray in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see some of you in a few weeks at church. Bye.